This is a horror game podcast. It is meant for mature audiences. It may contain shocking revelations, violence, and sexual themes. Viewer discretion is advised. Greetings, fellow investigators, and welcome to our video podcast, Into the Darkness, where my friends and I are playing the Mothership role-playing game. I'm your host, Tom Rayleigh. The scenario is entitled Spare Parts. It was written by Morgan Llewellyn, who is also our game warden, and this is a one-shot. So without any further delay, let's begin our journey into the darkness. Morgan? Thank you, Tom. The year is 3899. The expansion of humanity into the stars has brought with it intergalactic commerce. The needs of capital, of expansion, of ever-increasing markets throughout the depths of space has proved a massive logistical challenge. There are very few who dare attempt this feat, but without them, everything would grind to a halt. One of these pulsing arteries, the lifebloods of neo-capitalism is hive shipping and storage systems a logistics company who sets up installations all throughout colonized space our story takes place at one such installation orbiting a quiet star on the crossroads to various sectors it is called humbly hive 17. It is, in the name of efficiency, staffed as little as possible, where each employee is expected to give their maximum to keep up the room, board, and pay. And so we have the current shift, though don't be deceived, there is nobody else on the station who could readily take over. The next shift is due to replace them in about five years. And fortunately for them, they have the great opportunity to make the company happy with an efficient unloading as a new freighter is coming in this day to take new to take on its cargo and to leave again so currently trying to herd all of the cats to make this happen we have cassiopeia what are you up to right now i think i'm standing around and saying hey let's come on guys let's earn that gelatinated corn slurry Come on, let's, you know, haste makes no waste, or, wait, that's not how that saying goes. And yeah, I'm, I'm like a 5'4", uh, young person who uh, looks like they're maybe like 30 years old, um, which is considered young with the life extension mechanisms nowadays. Um, and... I've been working here for about 10 years since the last shift was replaced after a few losses. And so as the the shift lead is giving all of the uh all the tips and tricks from the uh, 10 minutes of training videos that they received upon their promotion. Half of them were anti-union. Oh, what half? Only half? This is going to be reported to compliance immediately. Um, so, so Cassiopeia is trying to motivate everyone. So let's meet some other members of the current shift at Hive 17. Uh, Ardo. Uh, yeah, I'm a little busy right now. These... Uh... These uh, Taulima capacitors are not functioning properly uh, on the uh, Hypertrans uh, Not 7 loader. Um, I need to get that repaired before the cargo actually gets here, or we're going to have some trouble. Uh, I'm uh, heavy machinery. So this is a shit show. Another person currently in the shit show, uh, Jake. 
what's going on. Yeah. Um, Jake is currently working with Ardo trying to keep this rust bucket from falling apart. You know, if the company would just spend a little extra money, I wouldn't have to scrap around and piece this shit together to keep it working. But I know. tell you, it would just cost them 17 quadrants and uh, we could do it. But fuck them. There's better technology out there. I mean, really, this stuff is like ancient. I think my grandpa was working on this stuff. We could get one of those new uh, artificial uh, uh, managers and we wouldn't have to worry about that talks in the Jesus Christ. What the fuck is this all over my machinery? Oh damn it! It's leaking again. The shit. I'm 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 trying to <sighs> plug some ports and holes and. Uh, oh, you know our that Lord. Spanner. You know our yeah. Lord and Savior Jeff Beetlejuice doesn't like you complaining. Uh, well, you know I'm not complaining. Um. Uh. This is observation. Observation, you see. See, I am observing shit break. And I don't well, like it. Maybe you should put in those rec orders like we asked you to. Like for more parts. Better equipment. If we got better equipment, you guys wouldn't be as sharp. Come on. Uh, I think we need to do some more team building exercises. I I don't think. I, I think you need to actually go down to maintenance where we've got some parts stored i've got them in a box it's labeled life support it's not actually life support in there i've just got it labeled life support jake try the starter now okay okay here we go and i've got hands up there yeah i'm i'm just holding the fucking thing together okay okay hold on i'm, I'm screwing it together okay okay How's it look? Uh, okay, I've let go so far. So far, I think everything's going to hold up. Okay, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna run some diagnostics on this. Yeah, just don't breathe on it too hard. <laughs> sure. Um, oh, and Cassiopeia, if you could grab some duct tape, that'd be great. Ed, could you grab me some duct tape? That's the spirit. I've got the. So, Eddie, according to your calculations, um, you are currently several hours behind schedule. Um, so you Very know. well. Um, so, yeah, Cassiopeia's um, calls for haste produced no visual effect on Edie's work at all. Um, she was scanning things and then checking a tablet to see that they matched the inventory list. But as soon as Cassiopeia made the call very well, just simply place things down and go fetch the duct tape. Here you are, uh, Jake Ardo. You said you needed duct tape? Yes, yes, thank you. Um, uh, Do you so, require assistance? Yes, always. Hold this. Very well. What do you Eddie, what do you know about uh, F-16 loaders? Is that in your programming? No, I know very little about them. Yeah. Uh, you know Programmed that there are three F-16 loaders um, currently in storage area 72-A. When's the uh, cargo getting here? When is the cargo getting here? Bobby B. You are aware that the current inbound ship with a uh, load with the request to both unload and load materials is due in about three hours. Oh, we cannot hear you. Mm 
the comm system's down. That's uh <laughs> Last yeah. I heard, last I heard from Bobby, cargo was due to How's arrive that? in three hours. Three hours. There you are. <clears throat> I just okay. reconnected Great. the wires. Yeah, sorry about that. We were we cross wired some stuff and we got it fixed. Yeah. Well, you're you're getting the loader repaired, right? It's uh three hours away before we need to be using it. Three hours. That's uh, gonna be cutting it really close. Yeah, I think we can do it. Well, you're going to have to do it by hand, if nothing else. They're going to be here expecting it. Yeah, try uh, lifting a 2 billion ton crate by hand. Don't be silly, it's not 2 billion tons. It looks like it. It's 475,282 tons. Oh. Yeah, I think it's it's operating in, in normal parameters. So I think we're in good shape. There's the screwdriver that I've been looking for. Ah, uh, yeah. I think that'll do it. <laughs> yep, yeah, I think that's going to hold. Are you really that far behind? Do you need me to come down and give assistance? No, no, you'll just get in the way. Yeah, we're mm-hmm. fine. How are you the doing, inventory Bobby? is several hours behind Bobby 17. I could use some assistance. Very well. I'll come down. Well, then I'll go right back okay. to doing inventory. Yep. So Let's Eddie and Bobby this. B are scanning crates. Ardo and Jake are desperately trying to keep the equipment from falling apart. Um, Cassiopeia is uh, micromanaging uh, to the best of their ability. Um, And about 20 minutes after that last conversation, um, Bobby B, you're there with Eddie. You're scanning to make sure that everything that's... um, tag to be offloaded onto this freighter is getting moved to the to the loading bay um you receive a message to the automated uh, system that the sh- the freighter has arrived ahead of schedule uh, <clears throat> well i'll walk out into the the bay and say attention everyone um they are ahead of schedule we need to commence the unloading procedure immediately uh huh they're going to have to wait at least 20 minutes. Yeah. Uh, Bobby, we need to work together uh, to hold them up in port. Do we have any, like, uh, forms we can make them sign or something? Um, well, I mean, they already have all of their forms signed. Um, are are well, you Are you implying that we should come up with extra work for no reason? Just make them sit Leave there this to me. Them. Leave this to me. <laughs> They get in here early, they gotta sit there and wait. That's no Meanwhile, good. I'm gonna um, start to I'm gonna start to move the loader over onto the dock. Yeah. So uh, our hive is gonna have negative reports if we make them wait. I'm sure you're aware. I'm gonna try to go into my office and find some old ass like docking regulation I can make them sign. That's that is easily done. So and when you're at your office, your your computer terminal is saying that um a representative from the freighter is uh waiting to meet with you. Got and it. receiving. Okay. I shall head over there. Okay, so you head upstairs. Is everybody else still frantically working away? Yeah, we're yep. we're trying to meet this twenty minute deadline. Okay. So Cassiopeia, you arrive in kind of the receiving area, which is this little lobby where people from the ship come if they need to talk with you about anything. Um, and seated very calmly in a chair, um, is a very tall man, um, in a crisp black suit. Sitting next to him is a woman 
um, dressed in a, she has a, wearing a blazer. She has short, uh, very short hair. This very serious look on her face. She is holding a, a bunch of documents in her hand. And sitting on either side of them, you see, well, not really sitting, standing on either side of them are these two hulking figures in fully sealed suits, entirely opaque face shields, um, standing at attention with weapons. Uh... Hey, what do I uh, feel outnumbered all of a sudden, folks? Uh, what's with the getup? Oh, the the man starts uh, stands up and goes to shake your hand. He says, "I am I'm sorry for the uh, <laughs> for the number. It's just a paranoia is a standard procedure these days." Pleased to meet you. Good to meet you as well. And I will shake his hand. What is your title or position here? I'm team leader of this fine hive. Wonderful. You are exactly the person I needed to speak to. Please, is this a good place to talk? Sure, we could go into my office if you want, um, but here's fine. Here's fine. Here's fine. Well, that's that's wonderful. Listen, um, here's fine. Your office is great. Where is your office? You know, it's down. It's down by the warehouse. Down, down by the warehouse. Do you have a? He kind of looks to one of these giant hulking figures behind him. It's like if you could just uh, give the uh, the details of how to get from here to your office to my assistant. Oh, I see. And I, I'm going to look at them. Do they look like they're from the Hive Company or is no. this a hostile takeover? This isn't, they're not, they're not Hive. This is, you know, the, the ships that come and go are usually customers. Um, but you just knew people were coming. They don't, you don't, didn't know who. You've been kind of a little busy today. Got it. All yours, buddy. Uh, down the hallway, a few clicks. And uh, to the left. Signs will direct you. That was... Oh, that, that's most excellent. And none of them move after you give the directions. I will begin walking towards my office. Oh, uh, that... Do you want to have this conversation in your office or are we still fine to talk here? Whatever works for you, buddy. Please have a seat. Okay, I will have a seat. Yes, uh, normally if I feel I would apologize for arriving early. Um, but my colleague here, and he gestures to the woman sitting next to him, um, filled out all the uh, urgent uh, order forms. And yeah. she starts to starts handing you these documents. I'm going to start looking at them, just glancing over them to see if there's you, the you start order. looking, you look at glances and it's canceling things that they're picking up, picking up new things. Like it's just this whole list of changes to their, to their order. Um, you know, this is totally against regulation, but, uh, we can certainly accommodate you. We will need you to help us though, because, uh, we have our machinery prepared for a completely different, you know, cargo that you guys ordered. It's we highly completely, unusual. completely, completely understand. Whatever time that you need. And the door to the reception area opens again. And you see two more people 
also dressed head to toe in sealed suits. Um, unlike the two menacing hulking figures, these ones are in this kind of like white plastic looking very sterile looking and they don't look at you at all and they start going down the hallway towards your office perfect yeah um you know if you don't mind me asking is there some sort of biohazard in any of these crates or anything like that i mean my workers are out there i i it's my job to protect them as team leader Again, I'm sorry. My employer always insists on the utmost uh, precautions. You understand. Of course, you know, crew are expendable <laughs> and everything like that. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. So, um, do you need anything else from us or can you process those forms? Got it covered. I'll have my best Android on it. Excellent. Well, we'll be here. Okay, I will sort of exit if they look like they're not going to blast me if I exit. Yeah, and, they don't. Uh, they don't even seem to watch you go. They kind of start having their own little conversation. Immediately book it for the warehouse floor. All right, so Ardo, Jake, Bob, and Eddie, you are greeted by a very frantic Cassiopeia. Hey, what's going on? Bad, bad news, guys. I think there's some sort of hostile takeover going on. What? There's a fucking Marine detachment that just landed. Holy shit. They completely changed the order as well, which I'm sure you guys are even less pleased to hear about. We're going to need right. to get them this specific cargo, and look, I got to warn you guys for, you know, the sake of, I feel it's my duty as your boss to warn you guys that there might be some sort of major biohazard involved. Biohazard? We don't, don't get, do we get hazard pay? I think that. If you don't do this order, we'll be liquidated. So don't worry about the pay right now. I'm not happy. Not happy. <laughs> Me neither. What are your Jake, orders, Cassiopeia? Uh, just fulfill the order. They canceled a bunch of shipping. They wanted some other cargo that they didn't yet i mean i assume it's somewhere in here here yeah, uh i'm let assuming me see we have a number i can there. go i'll check the inventory list i'm assuming we have a number i'll go i'll go run down the inventory itself and perhaps ardo and jake can help me get it loaded that's my job quite honestly you say hostile takeover they still need me so i think my my job is secured I'd like to see him fix. I don't. I don't care there. who pays me as long as they pay me. But uh, probably just best to do whatever they want us to do, and then they'll leave. Do they look like black ops? Do they look like fucking black ops? Yeah, they look like some sort of fucking corporate okay. warriors or something like that. <clears throat> then take it from me, we might have another problem. If they're doing something covert and they're taking something they shouldn't be taking. They're very likely going to leave here and blow us all up when they leave. That thought crossed my mind. So maybe try to get a hold of somebody. Uh, you're going to have to do it covertly yourself, but if we got to chase these people away rather than, I don't know, we're kind of in a fucked position, aren't we? What's on the, what's on the inventory list? I mean, what are they asking for? What do they want? Yeah. Okay, I Eddie, will... if you want to roll computers to ingest this stack of paperwork. All right. So it's the two 
D one hundred the D one hundred and then yep. it's your whatever my computer's plus is your plus your computer. 10. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. So I rolled a seventy three. My computer's is plus ten, so eighty three. So that that's you add that to your intelligence score. And that's the okay. I'm sorry. Against. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm shaking off the rust a little bit. Okay, intelligence. So my intelligence now it's seventy six, and I rolled a seventy three. So that's pass. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you start ingesting, and it looks like a lot of the material, like what they were loading, was a lot of industrial materials. Um, those have been canceled. And a lot of the stuff is in your deep freezer section that they're asking for. Huh. Deep freeze. Do you know who those packages were supposed to go to? Yeah, Packing. that's that's what I'm interested in. Could I could I pull up the customer file and make sure that this is the same people that ordered it initially? So you look up the customer file. Um, you see this this freighter has been chartered by a company called Gaia Research Group. And they are currently uh, requisitioning um, materials from a subsidiary. All of our computer systems. Well, um, yeah, once once I uh, yeah, just file through that real quick, I'll um, I'll uh, find my way to Cassiopeia and say, hey, I'm, I'm sorry that they rattled you. So um, everything looks fine on this end. I. I'm not sure what impression they left you with, but I believe that this is standard procedure. Well, that's good. They gave me the choice between the escape pods and the coffee machine. I chose the coffee machine. Yeah. Well, we handle with uh, some pretty dangerous people. As long as we just hand them their product, I'm sure they'll float away and never bother us again. Perfect. Just remember, you've got a you've got a negotiating tactic. I mean, you. They can't do it themselves. If they could do it themselves, they would just kill us all and do it themselves. Well, we're just we're just the middleman. They're they're getting some supply from people that we deal with. Okay, as long as I don't want to get wrapped up in any kind of illegal operation. I'm seeing items here that do not match anything in the database and i'll pull up three numbers these Old three storage. items like like we don't have them they don't match anything we have in inventory oh uh we've never I mean, had our... these items in inventory morgan at any point no so they're they're from the the, the pre-new system, so they were probably here. Geez, how long have they been here? A hundred years. Yeah, I mean, um, they're our last upgrade was a while ago before I was here. So, does anybody know about the Gaia Group? I mean, we've done stuff for them before, haven't we? They're a research facility, um, science um, yeah, development. Really in, in freight. The old scientific equipment. I think they I deal know. in biological material, though, so it would make sense with the freeze. Medical. Yeah, it could be medical stuff. So you look at looking at the logs, this deep freeze material that they're accessing has been frozen for it looks like at this particular facility, 800 years. Yeah, so before the previous system. That's why it's not in your computer. Cassiopeia, what is your direction on these three items that we do not have an in inventory? Well, we're going to have to find them in in cold storage. I mean, Jesus, I, I've never even been down there. I, I've been down there once. All right, then why don't you and maybe Jake or Bobby try to find sure. it? I mean, I'll Inventory give you the Inventory is what I was programmed for. I can. Oh, that's a, yeah, of course. Yeah, Eddie, Eddie. You know, there might be residual information on the core about stuff from before, you know, 
the previous uh, system uh if you want to check that that wouldn't be normally in your in your system but it might be there what the inventory is anyways i'll suit up whoever wants to come with me uh we got to wear the bulk suits you know the big because i think that it's what negative 126 down there approximately yeah so that's going to take at least 15 minutes to get those suits ready because they're they're not primed for that kind of temperature to currently i'll go um so we're not doing any loading right now then um they got the that's the first that, time. the ones that stay up top we can deal with the regular stuff they want i mean okay well, we're gonna need to unload the the stuff that you did load they're not getting that anymore uh oh. Well, I hadn't I hadn't really begun much, so that's all that stuff over there. Um, hmm. All right, all right, all right. So I climbed down out of the the loader, and I'm going to head towards the uh, the lower. I assume it's like on one of the lower decks that uh, the hatch into the cooling area. Yes, the ridiculous. You have to go suits. deep into the bowels of this place to get to yeah. deep frozen storage. I'll go with. Edie, before you go, mm -hmm. um, the inventory isn't on file. Is there a previous system that I would be able to access some kind of archives or something? Try the core. The... So there are, yeah, as, as Ardo suggests, talking to the computer core itself, um, It might have been way. erased, but I don't. Is that something that, erased. Bobby? Is that something that you would like me to put as uh, take on as a task, or should I go with Ardo? No, I think you should go with him since you understand the layout. But um, yeah, I can I can just see if there's any archives. Okay, so Bob is going to go look at, at archives. Eddie and Ardo are going into deep storage Cassiopeia and Jake what are you two going to do I'm going to stay in the dock area <clears throat> unload all the things I don't want and start to load in all the things I do want okay so you're you're moving you're moving stuff out of the way getting this place yeah. ready and Cassiopeia I'm going to see if I can get on employee surveillance and um, look at what these people are doing uh, while we're not watching them okay let's start with ardo and eddie okay. these stem suits are so bulky here here be still i will help you you're like darth vader in this suit <laughs> who is marth vader Oh, it's an old video, uh, you know, back in the old days. Uh, all right, I think it's I think it's lubed. I think it's ready. Uh, I've kicked in the the heating system so I don't freeze to death. I'm assuming I should probably wear a suit as well. Yeah, this well, uh, androids tend to operate very well in the cold. Mm, uh, okay. This is this is far too much. Okay. Then yes, I will also put on a environmental suit. So we turn the hatch and steam. Yeah, and you hear this the depressurizing. And basically the whole room just fills with this like ice crystals. Bog, so it's almost like yeah. you're in a snow globe right now. Clunk, clunk. Plunk, plunk. Yeah, so you 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 climb down, um, and there's no lighting down here. Probably have lighting though on our yeah. Suits. So you bring mm -hmm. very low, just very dim red light. Nothing that can bring any serious heat. Mm -hmm. Um. 
and it's this like claus claustrophobic already and then in your suits there's no way for one of you to get past the other down mm -hmm. here um and it is kind of just these uh concentric rings essentially and right. lots and lots and lots of units you know what file we're looking for what uh what unit uh, yes, we're looking for the node two deck five unit. Five. That's a long way down. So. Okay. So you make your way there. This takes maybe half an hour. Okay. And you you reach this node, and it's yeah, this is massive metal coffin looking cylinder thing like size for a human to be frozen inside of yeah about yeah this this my guess is this is a person somebody they froze a long time ago maybe, perhaps maybe... they're needed to be taken out of cryogenesis yeah this is some cryogenesis um, all the support systems seem to be correctly operating. Temperature inside. Um, I think this uh, this lever here will move it from an upright position to a sideways position. Uh, and a couple of grav locks on this, and we should be able to carry it out um, without Is too much just trouble. Is it one item that we actually have the location coding for or is there multiple there are, three. We know? There three. are three items down here that you have the location coding for okay so i'll i'll turn on the grav the grav locks it'll levitate above the ground a little bit and push it on find the second one do the same thing and maybe use magnets to hold the three of them together as we move them all down the corridor towards the lift Okay, so we'll That's say you plan. you've collected <laughs> two of these so far. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's a long process. It takes time, yeah. And they might stick. They might Jake. be frozen in there. You're alone in the loading bay. Great. You're moving things around. Why are you so nervous? Um, <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, there's these people in the thing back there, and they've got masks and guns and stuff, and that's not cool. Yeah, so you're you're moving with the loader. You're moving all these massive crates back, and then all your hours of effort of getting it fixed seem all for naught as it sputters and dies. Yeah, but. I would like to check the machine to see if it's a quick fix or if it's another crazy botch job that I've got to do. So you you start trying to get a diagnostic, um, but nothing comes back. It seems that the onboard computer systems have froze. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'll try to do a reset if I can. Turn it off, turn it back on. Okay. So you turn it off, and the whole thing. And you turn it back on, and it starts to hum. And as you're sitting there waiting for it to power back on, there's a knock at the driver's door. Okay. And I, I look over. You look and it's one of the people Cassiopeia seemed to be describing. It's almost like a ghost, this person in all of this white, almost beige, plastic sheeting, full face shield. You can't see their face at all. Um, and they seem to be motioning for you to open the door. Okay. I'll, I'll open the door and uh, 
can I can I help you? When was your last medical examination? Uh, probably the last time the hive doctor came through. Mm -hmm. My records show that was three years ago. Sounds Hold about still, right. Please. Wait, 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 what are you doing? And they start pulling out this kind of this metal box that's with them and they pull out this looks like a metal wand, all this coil, you don't know what the hell it is, and they start waving it over you. Hold still, please. Okay. Is that like a magic wand? Parameters are acceptable, thank you. And they tuck that back on their back, and then they leave. And you see them go up the stairs, and as soon as they exit this room, your machine power's back on. Uh, that was crazy shit. Uh, okay. I'm gonna go back to work, but I'm gonna keep a better eye out for any more of these visitors. Okay, you start moving crates again. Cassiopeia. You go to security. And by the time you get there, you see on the cameras this interaction that Jake has um, in the loading bay. You look back at reception, and those four individuals are gone. Okay, I'm going to quickly just swap through all the cameras. Okay. Roll speed. All right. Oh, uh, that's not going to be good. Yeah, I don't have a plus 50 in anything, so I, that is a critical fail. Okay, so in your in your nervousness, you're just swapping between camera feeds, and you're going so quick that you're getting no information. Okay. <laughs> you're just sitting here just... Flipping through, through screens, and you'll be doing this with a critical failure for quite a long time. Oh my God, where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Um, Bob B, you reach the computer core. It's been a long time since you've been in this room. In fact, this was where you were woken up or born in the sense um, to begin your life and you haven't yet returned. There is, it's very dark in this room. There is a terminal present for humans to talk to the computer core. And then there's also a port for androids to directly interface with the computer core. Yeah, I'll go to the port with just the slightest little bit of apprehension and say, hello, mothership. I'm here to seek some information. What information do you need? On an item that isn't shown on our inventory, frozen 800 years ago. And I'll give the specifics. Okay. One moment, please. Running. Running. Three items found in deep storage. Three unknowns. Would you like cross-check? Yes, please. Record cross-checking. Number match found. Not inventory numbers. Employee medical record numbers for Cassiopeia Boutez 
Ardo Swin, and Jake Geitz. Do you need anything else? Hmm. Interesting. Do you have the birth dates of those three? Birth dates, it gives you it gives you all their birthdays. Of a hundred years ago or recent? Reason. So it found three items that are frozen eight hundred years ago. And these three unknown numbers are medical record numbers for Ardo, Cassiopeia, and Jake. Hmm. All right. Well, very well. Uh, let's see. Um, and so Edie should have the specific locations of them. Uh, I believe everything is proper. Thank you, computer. You're welcome. For access has been logged and filed with Hive. Thank you. So in around this time, Ardo and Ed, you have arrived at the third and final of these containers. You're muted. I was just speechless. Uh, this one's giving me a little trouble. It's sticking. I need to get up with the... If you just use the spudger, you'll break the stiction. Then you can rotate the rack, Ardo. Yeah. There. That should do it. Rotate. A little window. Ah, uh, thank God these things are are degrav. Otherwise, they would weigh Just a ton. Everything seems to be functioning. Uh, yes. All right, let's hook them together and start moving them down. I'm gonna with my uh, with my overall wrist or whatever. I'm going to wipe the frost off of the, the little window on the top and just take a peek inside. So looking at the frosted windows, it seems to be there's two men and a and a woman. Uh-huh. Otherwise their cylinders are unmarked. Unmarked. Uh yeah, it's people. Um excellent probably... deduction. Probably somebody uh, big in the company that uh, needed spare parts or spare body parts here. You know, the way, like in Clonus. You know that one? Do you know the reference, Clonus? That's another vid, an old vid. No, people. I people searched, uh, yeah, the Darth Vader reference, uh, 1977 film. I My records do not whatever this is that you're talking about now uh, records do not contain it well in clonus there was i'm going to explain an island where there were all these healthy young people and uh if they performed well they got to go to a place called america hmm. but the truth was when they went to america they were harvested for their organs because their real counterparts were living somewhere else ah an interesting deception a twist yeah that's a genre they used to call horror and science fiction so we're we're pushing these towards the lift i don't know why we didn't take the lift down but i always got to take the lift up so I'll load the three canisters into the, the lift. Oh, the lift can hold the canisters. You only need to go back gonna, to the hatch. Have to go up. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. So I'll close the... That, program it to go up to the loading bay level and send it on its way. Before we leave here, Ardo, let me message Bobby and see if he uh, was able to locate the locations for those three items. Yeah. At the same time, if they're here as well. 
I'll contact Bobby. I don't know if we have like a texting system and intercom, but yeah, I'll, I'll reach out to him and see if he found the location for those three unknown items. Okay, so Bobby, you've reached as you wanted to uh, Cassiopeia, who yes. is currently frantically switching through camera feeds. So I, I break that cycle by startling you. Just greetings, Cassiopeia. I have Jesus good news. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so I've conferred with the computer core. And we have the three items that they're seeking. Uh, very old. Um, so we should be able to load them, no problem, give them off to the customer. However, there was a peculiar discrepancy. Uh, according to the computer log, um, inside of the inventory is Cassiopeia, Ardo, and Jake. The medical records, at least. It seems strange to me. But... Like I said, it's in storage, so we should be able to load it up, no problem. Were there in the in the computer core? Yes, yes. From eight hundred years ago. What? Yeah, I thought it was strange, so I checked your birth date. Um you weren't born eight hundred years ago, so I'm not sure how this is, but according to the computer, everything's fine. Yeah, I wasn't born eight hundred years ago. Weird have yourself taken over to to Jake for uh for inspection. I hope you're not glitching out on me. Okay, right away. Yeah. Uh, I can't find them. They must be off camp. I'm going to go back into the main uh the main uh warehouse floor. Okay. And uh, yeah, is there a comm system for Edie? Yeah, at the time Edie and Ardo emerge from the deep freeze, comms are restored. Bobby. Yes, hello. Is Edie, line two. Um, were you able to find location coding for the missing items? Yes. Um, and I'll I'll confer that it's what you already went to go look for. And uh, yeah. The computer course says that it was before our current inventory system. Um, it reported to me that it was Ardo, Cassiopeia, and Jake that you have recovered. Uh, Cassiopeia believes I may be malfunctioning, and I'm going to go see, have a diagnostics check. Are there any actions that you need us to take, or is retrieving the three items sufficient? I think we just need to load up our customers and let them be on their way. Very well. So I go over to the lift and open up the door again. And, hey, uh, and there they are, the three cylinders. I've taken off my encounter suit. Well, here they are. Where do they want them? On their ship? Perhaps we bring them to Jake. I think he said he was going He's to start getting inventory ready for them. He's running the loader. I don't need your help for that. I can take these over to him. Very well. So I push them. I think I just resume into, whatever uh, task is right. normally my job at these kinds of events. So back to Yo, the Jake. Hey, Ardo. What we you got, got there? Well, we got the packages. It's <clears throat> it's it's three bodies. Oh, shit. Two dudes and a chick. They're uh, uh, they're in deep free freeze. Um, all of their all their instrumentation says that they're in perfect condition. They are. They just have to be unfrozen. Interesting. That's cool. I don't know if they want us to unfreeze them first, or if they want them just loaded the way they are. Uh, I figure we can just load them the way they are, and then they can take care of any dethawing. Well, maybe we should find out, just in case. Yeah. Oh, so hey. Cassiopeia says, yeah. By the way, <clears throat> I had a weird experience. Uh, one of the suited guys came down. You know, he's all dressed up in like a biohazard suit. Yeah. And I didn't notice him when he came down, but the loader here quit working. 
Was and, it the uh, was it the the hyphen valve again? That's no, uh, no, the computer was stuck. So I turned it off, turned it back on, nothing. And this knock comes on the door, and it's this guy in the suit. So I okay. open the door. I open the door, and I'm like, can I help you? He asked me when my last medical check was. And then he took out a, a wand and waved it over me and said I was in good shape. Medical and then walked wand. away. Yeah, That's weird. Uh, I've never seen him do that before. What's he, a doctor? I don't you know. You talk about I mean, the ones with the, the no faces? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got like a suit and no face. I couldn't make out his face. Um, but then the strangest thing was when he left the bay, loader came back on. Oh. That doesn't sound right. That sounds like some sort of uh, EM interference. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. I'll just assume they get the fuck out of our ship. No kidding. Um, <clears throat> let's get these tubes loaded. Get them out of here. Well, I why don't you contact Cassiopeia first and tell her, ask them ah, yeah, what yeah, they yeah. want us to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do that. I'll get her on the comm. Uh, <clears throat> hey, Cassiopeia, this is Jake. Uh, yeah, Jake, what's up? Um, seems like our visitors are missing, but I saw that weird interaction you had with them on cam. What's up with that? Don't know. He took a, waved a wand over me and kind of like did a, a quick medical. Medi medical. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Said I was in perfect working parameters or some shit like that. Um, anyway... These these tubes are frozen. Do we want to dethaw them first before we load them, or just load them as they're frozen? Well, gee, uh, it's probably running on its own cryo right now. Once we took it out of freeze, we'll have a. I don't know how old the system. Eight hundred years old. It could be only a few hours before these things start thawing. Nah, nah. Tell her that they'll last another thousand years. No, no, no. They'll they'll last for a long time, I think, on 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 this. So, it's it's we're... a nuclear decay decay switch. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, jeez, when were those invented? <laughs> I'm not a I'm not good at ancient history, so sorry. Yeah. But um, yeah, I'll I'll uh, I'll come, I'll come down there. I kind of want to take a look, just to make sure. Yeah. It's two yeah. two two dudes and a chick. Yeah, it's two two guys and a and a lady. Uh, mm -hmm. Everything seems fine. You know, the tubes are in good working condition. You know, there's no damage, so we shouldn't have any complaints. Uh, you know, about mishandling or anything like that, given their age. Yeah, let me let me hop on down there and uh, we'll, we'll try crack. It it couldn't hurt to crack them open. It won't damage. Will it? Uh, I don't know, Ardo. Can we can we open these things? No, I mean you can you can see inside. If you open them, they'll, you'll thaw them out. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. If we open them, we'll thaw them out. So I think we can see inside, though. Yeah, I definitely want to take. You a can look. see there. You can you can monitor their their vitals. Yeah. Hey, come on down. Take a look. Cool. I'll be there in a jiff. And and Jake, you know we we know it's a female. We don't know if she's a lady. Ah, well, you know, never right. met her before. <laughs> that, that's true. That's true. I will just look at my uh, ceremonial picture of Lord Beetlejuice, the CEO, and uh, be like, grant me strength and walk back down to the warehouse. Okay, you exit security and standing outside with his broad smile and suit. Is a man you met in the foyer. Uh, hello there. Wow. A uh, little lost? Or is there something in security for you? Well, you are here. And I just wanted to check up on our timetable. How are we doing? Uh, well, 
we got our packages out of deep freeze. Like, yes, they're on the warehouse floor now. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. And he turns, and standing further down in the hallway, you see one of those hulking figures. And he gives him a nod, and he leaves. Um, and as he leaves, behind him, you see one of those people in the beige whitish suits start approaching you with a metal box and this wand thing. Okay, I kind of know what to expect here, so I'm I'm cool. Hold still, please. Thank you. Yeah, the man, the suit starts again. So they're out of storage. That's wonderful news. We always knew that Hive was efficient. I, you know, I couldn't have, I couldn't help but uh, send one of my androids to go uh, look at the files in the computer core. You know, funniest thing, I, that old bucket of rust. He's, uh, he's an old model, but uh, he, he said something about, uh, no offense, but he said something about um, the, the, the labeling on those packages being our names me and my two crew you know isn't that crazy the world is full of funny things yeah yeah of course of course is there a problem no i just think his chips are fried you know i'm i sent him over to my maintenance guy well it's a good thing that you did that Please, do you, do you have a moment? Of course. Can we speak in your office? Of course, yeah. Anything for our uh, good, value, valued customers. Wonderful. Right this way. I will follow him. As okay. he leads me into my own office. <laughs> so, yeah. Ardo, Jake, Eddie, and... Cassiopeia has gone on doesn't said they'd be right down and yeah she's gonna tell us whether we should thaw them out or not thaw them out <laughs> yeah I don't know I, I'm just gonna smoke another cigarette yeah I'm just gonna kind of wait I would assume wait if on. they wanted thawing out that would have been in our instructions that's true that's true but you know we're just making sure that what we're doing yeah, is the right I mean, thing you know we can we can oh. put them in their ship and install them and get them all hooked up to power, but then it's just a hassle that they wanted to thaw them out. Hello, everyone. I don't know. Is things going accordingly? Hello, Bobby. Hi, hey, Bobby. Uh, so, um, Bobby, what would be more uh, economical? Would you take three passengers who are frozen... Uh, but would need to be hooked up to the ship and draw power, or would you thaw them out and just feed and house them until you get home? Well, the the package should be delivered wrapped, I'd assume. Um, if if they ask for any special instructions beyond that, then you know they'll do that when you're putting it on the ship. But well, that's um, what we're waiting for now. But yeah. Jake, it, it looks like you're available. Yes. Yeah, I'm. I'm just waiting on Cassiopeia. Yeah. Um, well, great. If you don't mind, uh, could you run some diagnostics on me? Um, she believes that I may be malfunctioning. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Not a problem. I'll uh, get up my equipment and test everything. <clears throat> and I'll... Not you. Not you, Bobby. I wouldn't know. Yeah. It's, it's worth a look. I mean, it ain't going to hurt. You know, uh, I figure everything's working just fine. But, you know... Yeah. Yeah, Jake, you can give me a cybernetics check. Cassie seems a little bit nervous about these people. Okay. Um, so that's intellect plus the skill. Yep. And then a roll under that, right? Yes. Okay. Hmm. 
Okay, I uh, I rolled a twenty nine, so I'm okay. past that. Bobby B is pristine functioning condition. Yep, there's I, not. Everything's fine. Yeah, I unhook every all my equipment, slap him on the shoulder, and say, "Bobby B, you're good to go. No problems." All right, excellent. Yeah, the funniest thing happened. I reported that the computer told me that it was you three frozen in those pods, and she thought that there was some kind of problem with my brain. But anyways, um, she's wait, been gone wait. a long time, haven't you? Wait. What do you mean it was us? On that note, Ca- Cassiopeia. You arrive at what used to be your office. The desk, the filing cabinets, everything has been removed. It smells heavily of antiseptic. It has been scrubbed down to the point where it shines. There is a lot of medical apparatus and two operating beds. One of your Marines have an accident? Oh, no. We here at Gaia don't believe in accidents, Cassiopeia. Uh Uh-huh. Is there, are there any like scalpels or anything around? (laughs) You look around and there's plenty of surgical apparatus. I'll keep it in mind. And there's a few of these people in the in the beige suits who are again using their these wand things around the room. Yeah, I guess this is uh for your uh your packages, huh? It is. You're very perspicacious. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, that's what they pay me for. Anyway, uh, so I'll just, you know, so, leave, you, leave you to it. We need another change in the, the request. We don't need them loaded. We need them brought here. No problem. Your, your crew should be capable of handling that? Yep. 100%. Um, uh, do you want us to unthaw them? They're on they're on cryo right now. We can handle that ourselves. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, time's money. I'll I'll get out of your hair. No, you need... don't you don't need to worry yourself about that. The station is equipped with remote communications. No. You know, they've been just bugging out on us ever, you know, like the computers, everything. They're going haywire. Well, listen, this will all be more efficient. I mean, we have a time schedule to keep. So, I mean, if you go wander off to get them, that's just that's just minutes wasted. I don't I don't see why we should spend any more time here. Um, and he looks past you into what the room that was your office. And he says, I believe we should be ready to proceed now. Is there, am I in the office right now? Yeah, you're kind of in the doorway and this man in the suit is standing like kind of boxing you in. Okay. I'm going to push past him and run. (laughs) Okay, you can roll combat. We got a runner. Yep. (laughs) Come on. Oh no. Oh, oh no, no. Oh no, 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 no. Yeah, that's a fail. All right, so you dive into him. (laughs) And you meet the metal frame of an android. 
Oh, is this not the way to the bathroom? <laughs> and you I'm turn, and one of these people in the beige suit is approaching you with this very menacing-looking syringe. Yeah, again, I'll try to get away, but probably not succeed. Yeah, you can give me one last roll for combat. No, oh, perfect. Nope. We're in the high 70s tonight. Yeah, so you, you try to struggle out, and you, you think for a moment that you're about to slip away um, until you realize that the, the android has positioned itself to a point where it can comfortably pick you up. And it says, please, please, don't damage what we've come all this way to collect. And then you feel the needle. The other four of you are contemplating what to do and where Cassiopeia is. So you're telling us these were labeled with our names. I'm going to go back over to at least one of the dudes and, you know, pull out my, my rag and clean the glass. See if I can, I'll even shine my torch so that I can see right down inside to the face. You, you look in there and, uh, they, kind of look like jake 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 this one's you what let me look let me look at that let me look at that and i'm gonna go over and look at as well holy I mean, shit he's, yeah it looks like a younger your... a younger you how how am i in there i'm here uh i'm gonna go over <laughs> to the other male do the same thing yeah, you find yourself. Oh. So you can all make sanity saves. I forget how to do that. You have a sanity save value that you want to roll. I see it. I see it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. I got Does that 11. include the two yeah. androids, Morgan? Um, I don't know. Did the androids find this uh, unbelievable? Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, I would say it's false yeah, You unbelievable. can make sanity. Okay. All right. I failed. I got sixteen over fourteen. Yeah. I'm I got. I got eleven. I'm fine. Fifteen over fourteen. Yeah. Fail. But okay. you get, you get okay, so if, if you if you fail, you can get one d eight stress. If you pass, just one stress. Okay. One one d eight uh, stress. Ooh, four. Are we clones? Are they clones? They're Girl older. Eight. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't. Perhaps your medical clone. records that Bobby found would shed some light on this. Well, the the medical records that I pulled up were for these recent iterations of you, the current one at least. It, it didn't show anything from so long ago. Uh, but I had a childhood. It, it sucked. I mean, none of us are 800 years old. How did you guys are logical beings? Like, what is a logical expl explanation for this? The only explanation seems to be cloning. But but for what purpose? I mean, something I to mean, do with this company, perhaps. I mean, we do a really good job. So they just keep cloning us and using us over and over again. Why not just build androids like you guys? You could last a thousand years. Perhaps just an experimentation on cloning in general. Well, I don't want to be an experiment. I don't either. Oh. I mean, you know, I mean, we're, we're, you know, maintenance guys on a, out in the middle of nowhere. Like, we're not special. 
Well, you're in a storage facility. Perhaps you've been stored. I mean, uh, are there any advantages particularly you can think of of being human over Android? No, but I I mean, I, I was joking about it earlier with 80, but sure. the thing is, is that, you know, if I broke an arm or if I got my arm cut off, you could replace it with a clone arm and it would be exactly the same thing. But I'm fine. I mean, the fact is I've been smoking for the last 20 years and I've never gotten lung cancer. It's like I got fresh lungs every three years. No, <laughs> no I'm just like freaking out at this point. Uh, and Jake, you said that the doctor guy came and said, you're in good working condition. Yeah, he he said I was in good per, in working parameters or something like that. Um I remember the ship that we flew in on when we when we took our ship what yeah 3 years ago I, yeah i mean i have memories of of like you i have memories of a childhood and everything and, okay and well you would still have a childhood if you were cloned you don't you don't become a clone fully grown these these aren't these aren't these are fully grown yeah that's those are the originals you were made from them that's just what makes sense to me. Okay. So you guys have computer brains, uh, access to history logs and whatnot. Can you find me in history 800 years ago? I need to go interface with a terminal. If you want me to, I could. Sure. Why not? So maybe, maybe the people will just tell us. Bobby B, you interface with the computer and you start looking through records. You just roll computers for me. That's your intelligence plus computers. Um, zero eight. So, I mean, that's just like a regular pass, right? It's not doubles. Yep, that's a regular. So. You start going back in records, um, and you do this quite quickly as you start trying to find different pieces of information about the, the present crew here, going back in the past. And while you struggle to find anything about their names, uh, you do find something rather peculiar to you. It seems that the last shift that was here have a DNA profile that matches the people here presently. And the shift before them have a DNA uh, match. And the one before that. And the one before that. It seems that every uh -huh. person that has ever been on this station are three individuals that have the same DNA. Okay. Or at least, yeah, three individuals and then the same three individuals DNA wise, on and on and on. Does this does this take some time, or can I go report back to him? Yeah, no, you can report back. Your your yeah. success means that, that you figured this out. So oh, good good news, everyone. It seems to be an issue of cloning. Yeah, uh, the three of you have manned the station for hundreds of years, but not the same three. No, no. So what do they do with us? Do we get to go and live a real life then? I'm not sure. Um, it doesn't really have any records of retirement age or anything like that, but presumably you'll continue manning the station after this current iterations of you expire. I'm I'm not sure I like the implication. What, what, if, what if they get rid of us? Well, I mean, you've been working this ship for hundreds of years. Uh, I think that your performance has been very satisfactory. No, well, of course it has, well, because I actually enjoy working here. Oh, you mean before. you specifically, I not the me. one after you? Oh, I don't know. Uh, well, I'd like to know. I mean, if we're going to get eliminated, I'd like to protest. Yeah, I like it. I like life. It's great. I like working here. Yeah. 
Well, I've if you'd like complained. to protest, I believe they're in Cassiopeia's office speaking with her now. I can try to file a formal complaint if you wish. Yeah, file a yeah. formal complaint. Let's go up yeah. there and see what's going on. <laughs> sure. Thing. I wonder if Cassiopeia has corporate. figured it out. And if and if let's go up there, Jake, and if if there's any problems, we're going to attack them. I, it will you be know, a, attack of the clones. But you know, I mean, it's actually a form of slavery to keep us here like this. Well, yeah, maybe, yeah, not because you know we do have good food, and it could be that, like myself and Bobby, you're both assets of the company. But then it isn't it's, slavery. Why don't it just make well, robots? No offense. No, yeah, no. Oh, if you can be manufactured and reproduced, what's the difference, really? So uh, about have... this about this time in your deliberations, one of these hulking figures with the weapons and the armor comes in with two of the ones in the medical looking attire. Um, and the, the the towering one just you hear this click of these external speakers in the armor, and this very monotone voice reports um, shipment location changed. Do not load these onto the ship. Where would you Wait like them? Here. Uh, bring them to Cassiopeia's office, please. We were just going up there. Yeah, not a problem. And you see, he points to the cylinder with the woman in it, and he says, bring that one first. Copy. Is, is, is Cassiopeia all right? Quite all right. All right. Are you the people that we submit formal complaints to? No. That would be the lawyer. Very well. She's on the ship. Well, there you Tell go, her. Mr. Swim. You can go speak with the lawyer. Yeah. Tell her we want to speak to her. How long Noted. are you scheduled to be She has been be notified. Here. Thank you. How long are you scheduled to be on the... Uh, uh, to be here? When are you scheduled to leave? We depart for Eden in two hours. I'm just pushing Cassio... Cassiopeia and Cryo along. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so Eddie's bringing Cassiopeia along. As I'm as I'm going along, I uh, I grab a rather hefty spanner to bring along with me a big pipe wrench. Yeah, I've got I my think crowbar. You'll need that. I didn't think there would be maintenance involved. Uh, well, the, the it, hatch might be stuck. Yeah. Call the it, hatch uh, might be stuck. Very well. Damn, I wish I had a programmed uh, Edie and, uh, and Bobby for defense. <laughs> <laughs> and pushing, going... Taking the cylinder through the corridor, all of you are hit with the strong smell of antiseptic. As you see, some of these medical people seem to be going down the hallways and they're scrubbing things down as they go. They took him out. Where are they took him out? And as you're arriving at the outside, of Cassiopeia's office. There is a figure now who you haven't seen yet whose full body suit is just a... The other ones are kind of a creamish beige. This one is stark, pure white. And he walks over and says, thank you so much for bringing this so promptly. Is there anything else? Uh, he inserts something into it, um, and he gets this like this readout. 
And then he pulls out this other thing to like compare it to. And he says, excellent. Excellent. That could be better, but it's acceptable and excellent. So you require um, further assistance. What's the deal? Are we clones? The uh, the deal is that it it's fortunate that um, you see the uh, the heart and the liver um, and parts of the digestive tract have decayed in cryo, but the replacement parts are suitable. Motherfucker. And I'm just going to turn around and start running. Okay, and so if Arthur anything gets off. in my way, I'm hitting him with uh, the crowbar. I mean, uh, uh, the wrench. Jake? I see Ardo run. I'm running. I'm not dealing with this. Okay, so yeah, Eddie, you see Eddie and Bob, you see the Jake and Ardo just run off. Can I be of any further assistance? Yes. First, bring the other two cylinders here and then collect those two pieces of inventory. Very well. I believe I was supposed to speak with your lawyer. Oh, yes. Yeah, oh, yes. The... We have formal complaints. Yes, you can file the complaint with her um, if you go to the ship. Um, and then this the door to... Cassiopeia's office opens. And Cassiopeia has been anesthetized and dissected. And there are various organs that have been prepared for immediate transference. And they begin the process of opening up the first of their canisters. Ardo and Jake, where are you running to? Well, we probably know the place like the back of our hand since we're in maintenance. Uh, Jake, we've got to get uh, where's the best place to hide? One of the uh, run of the Leroy tubes that runs along the side of the uh, uh, the reactor? Yeah, yeah, we can go down to the reactor and get through the Leroy, Leroy tubes. And they won't they won't be able to detect us there because of the radiation. Yeah. I think that what they're doing is they consider those things in the pods to be the important things, and they're using our organs to fix any problems. Yep. With with the frozen ones. So screw that. And yeah, if this... we get out of this alive, we are going to drink and we are going to smoke. So that our <laughs> fucking organs will not work to replace somebody else's <laughs> fucking organs. Yeah, this is bullshit. There's no escape pod on this craft, is there? Turns out there wasn't. You always found that weird design choice. Yeah. Best we can do is become rats in a maze. Yeah. So okay. that's our intention. So, Bobby, uh, you are told that uh, the complaints have been formally filed and will be reviewed in uh, seven to ten business days. Great. It reads, um, the crew has come, it has come to the crew's attention that they may be clones, and they are very dissatisfied with this fact. Understood. Again, it will be processed uh, in seven to ten business days. All right. I'm just getting canisters and moving them. <laughs> yeah. And so with the canisters, with the other two ready, um, they hand you uh, what's left of Cassiopeia. And they said, please uh, incinerate this uh, bio waste and retrieve the other two pieces of inventory that we need. Copy. Just going to go wheel this on over to the incinerator okay and 
Eddie and Bob, after you incinerate Cassiopeia, you are fed data from the security and surveillance systems. Um, well, you know where Ardo and Jake have scurried away to. Eddie, have you ever had the problem before where inventory doesn't want to be gathered? This is a new a new issue unencountered before. Um Well, I've always thought those two to be very reasonable. I'm sure we can talk <laughs> talk things through. Of course it's 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 orders. I don't know why they ran in the first place. In fact, I think I'd actually calm them. Uh Ardo, Jake, uh your orders are to report to Cassiopeia's office. Thank you, Eddie, for informing us of that. Fuck you. <laughs> well, that wasn't very nice. <laughs> that was quite unkind. He's never been so aggressive to me before. I am not particularly skilled in any form of combat, Bobby. Is that your... Do you have any specialty therein? Oh, absolutely not. I'm sure they'll dismantle me, but I have to try. Orders Eddie, Bobby, orders. you know that they're going to kill us. Yeah, they're going to yeah. cut us into pieces, man. We were yeah, friends. Yeah, we, we saw Cassiopeia. It was pretty messed up. And you're cool I'm with sorry. this. And you're cool with this. Um, it is our programming. <laughs> orders are orders. You yes, live forever. You have an infinite number of clones. That's more than we can say. Uh, no, they're going to just take our parts and give them to the clones. And Well, yes, but you'll be born again. Just No, you'll be they're not taking our more. brains. Hmm. They're just taking our hearts and our livers. I mean, look at this from a moral standpoint. We're just spare parts. We're spare parts. We have not signed on to this. We're not agreeable to be harvested. I mean, certainly you have moral and ethical programming. No. I don't believe I do. <laughs> That's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. I, I, I should have fixed that. I didn't realize that was a deficiency in your programming. I told you, Jake, we needed a kill switch. Uh, I'm yeah. telling you. Well, wait, are, are you are you suggesting that your <laughs> diagnostics report from earlier could have been inaccurate? For you? Yeah, you checked me just this morning, you know, 20 minutes ago. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I just checked, checked basic positronic functions and whatnot mm -hmm. i mean everything seemed to be firing right um wink wink nudge nudge you would like to redo the uh, diagnostics from earlier yeah i would absolutely oh well Edie, i think we might be malfunctioning we should go see jake oh we are malfunctioning I I'm a, I'm programmed to follow you. You're my admin. So, well, if that is the orders. Jake, maybe you can override their uh, their system. Yeah, I, I think I can. Let's if... let's let's hook up some hardwire into uh yeah, yeah, let's 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 get this fixed. Want to know, you know who I we only are. recently performed my maintenance my quarterly self-maintenance, Bobby. I didn't think anything came up abnormal. Yeah, well, for their sake, hopefully something does. All right, Arno, is it is the plan to shut them down, or are we going to try to reprogram them? If we can, if they've been hooked in to the security system, then the uh, I don't know if the Gaia people are going to use them to hunt us down and bring us in, but. If we can turn that around on them and and get them to attack the Gaia people, it's it's crazy. I don't want anybody to hurt my original body, but I don't want to die. Yeah, I'd like to get on board their ship and get the hell away, but. They've done this all before, every five years or so. Yeah. I bet you we've run before. Probably have. Probably haven't escaped then either. 
I bet you we hid in the same spot too. Shit. What do you think is so special about us being on this, in this place, harvesting our organs? It like, like it doesn't make any sense. It seems like we're being punished forever. Yeah. Must have been a hell of a crime. Eternal, eternal suffering. Yeah. It's like. Maybe there is maybe there's no heaven, hell, or God, but humans have invented them. Mm. So that now we I want to kill them all, take them with us. But what if we're important? Okay. Um <clears throat> I think I'm gonna get on comms and, and talk to E D. E D, have you located the position of, of uh I need a what's it called, a sit rep? Location, rep, report, sit. A from Cassiopeia. We've located Ardo and Jake. They are both in the node one rack. Perfect. Perfect. I'll meet you down there. Jesus Christ. And I will calmly walk down to where they are. I mean, I feel like we're in a no-win situation here. Jake, Ardo, hello? Cassiopeia, but they took you apart. What are you talking about? You're a fucking clone. What? We're all yeah. clones. Clones? <laughs> Three of us are clones. Clones of what? Ourselves. Of, of ourselves. We've been we've been we've been sentenced to work for our whole lives here and then get cloned and rework again for our whole lives. We've been you here mean, 800 fucking years. You mean yeah. the things in the tubes? The tube people? Yes. That's us. Yeah, uh I mean, I barely I barely got out of it. Look, I'm coming down. I'm coming down. I'll, I'll meet you there, okay? Uh, Cassiopeia, we were we were ordered by Jake to report for reprogramming. Is that still our orders? Listen, don't report to Jake. Report to me. Meet us down there, okay? Jake, I think you're right. I don't think there's any way out. Overload the reactor. I, I don't want to blow the place up. I don't want to. Like I said, what if we're important? Not us, but us. The originals, you mean? Right. Maybe they're going to unfreeze us at some point and give us our lives back, but it's not going to be us. Yeah. And I'm thinking about maybe, you know, so they can't use our parts, but then again, maybe that's saving our own lives. Fuck. This is like what? that damn thing with the train track that there's five people on this track and there's one person on that track. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. Old oh, yeah. Yeah. We're in a bad situation. Okay, let's talk to Cassiopeia. Let's see if she remembers anything. She's probably going to lie to us unknowingly. Well, I don't think it's her anymore. I think it's a reprogrammed clone. <laughs> yeah. No, that doesn't make any sense either. They threw away body parts. And is there still somebody inside the canister? Are they going to get refrozen? How'd they make Cassiopeia a new Cassiopeia so quickly? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. If she, it's if she, if she looks younger than she did twenty minutes ago, then there's that's the clone. Yeah, but if she's an exact copy of herself, then it really is her. Even yeah, if it's not her. Damn you, human science! So at this point, outside of node one, uh, 
Cassiopeia, Eddie, Bob, and one of the security team in their massive bulky suit have gathered. I'll ask the security guy to, to wait outside. Come on, guys. Let's go in. Talk some sense into these people. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> if I can say, you seem uh, far more confident than earlier. So, are you yeah, feeling I, better? I gotta get into character. Act like a pathetic low-level manager. <laughs> anyway, okay, I will, I will like grab the hatch and sort of slowly open it and peek in. Guys, are you in there? We're in here. Okay, one second. The androids are here too. Come on. Don't worry. I told them, you know, not to rat you out. <clears throat> so, go wait, inside. wait. Don't come in here. You stay right there. What happened what? to you? What happened to you? What do you mean, what happened to me? I, I was in my, uh, I was in security. Uh, I, uh, I went, there was a guy in a suit. Um, and then I saw this operating table and it looked like they were taking some organs or preparing yeah. to operate. That was it. Yeah. Preparing to operate. That checks out. Then, uh, then they gutted you and we incinerated the remains. Yeah. Yeah. Now Cassiopeia. Yeah. Now Cassiopeia. God, did you took up your remains? Part of them was disposed, and you have no problem with all that, right? You're perfectly like this is cool. What? I didn't see anybody gut anything. Oh, I disposed of the parts myself per protocol. It's true. You're she did an excellent a job. Clone. You're Thank a you, clone, Bobby. Cassiopeia. I'm a the. You were frozen solid just an hour ago. You're 800 years old. So are we. Look, look, can you're I, lying to us. Can I come in? Jeez. Look. I got a proposition. I'm your fucking manager. Can I come just, in, please? Ah. Uh, for protocol, Cassiopeia, our, you don't have to ask permission as you are. The she is our manager. Yeah. Per protocol, and, I don't. And but clone or not clone, she mm. still is our manager. So yeah. But but yeah. maybe we can make a deal, like the old clones can stick around, and just live out their lives while the new clones take over. We can train the new clones. Yeah, they could take care of us. Two Ardos and two Jakes oh, would be we'd better be... than we'd be able to get so much more done. Think mm -hmm. about it, Cassiopeia. Really increase our food costs. I'm not sure that the logistics would check out. You're but not Jake helping. And Ardo, you're you've already fulfilled your purpose. We could we could what tweak the hydroponics lab so that it produces more food. It was yeah, it was water. never about the warehouse. It's about you. What do you mean it wasn't about the warehouse? What have we been working at for four years, five years? I think you guys need to turn over your weapons. What weapons? All I've got <laughs> is a spanner and a torch and a and a laser uh -huh. welder and uh -huh. Yeah. What are you afraid of? Do it. Look, we don't think you're the enemy. We just think that you're deluded. We're all being tricked by this Gaia people. And I just want it to be on the level. If I'm a clone, I want to know that I'm a clone. You're a clone. Then, then just let me go. Thank you, Edie. Uh, but we can't let you go. Why need you? It's a big universe. Because it's we, not about we need a little you. bit of we need a little bit more explanation. 
Like, what exactly is our grand purpose? It's about your organs. We were growing you. If it helps any, Bobby successfully lodged or logged your formal complaint. With Thank you, Bobby. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If, uh, if you make it through the next week or so, uh, they should get back to you. <laughs> Great. Look, the security person, Cassiopeia, whispers to you. Madam, we have prepared the nerve gases. All right, just one second. I don't want them to be damaged. You guys are going to fulfill a greater purpose. This is, we've been at work at this for 800 years. You're going to be the most powerful people or uh, you from about this down are going to be the most powerful people in the solar system. Doesn't that make you happy? Huh? What were you doing here? Well, we were working maintenance. We had a job. We had a purpose. So loading, unloading. But will it be us? Are you putting our brains in new bodies? Well, did I dispose of a brain like out of character? Did I? I mean, they they didn't take anything from the brain, so yeah, it was waste matter. Yeah. Brains are considered waste matter. Just like the ancient Egyptians. I don't know yeah. what what's you. You know, your heart, your lungs, your guts, my your brain. pancreas. Your brain, it's just an organ. It's like 0.5% of you, or maybe a little more than that. Yeah, but a mind is a terrible way, thing to waste. You know, <laughs> if you keep doing this, and if we are compliant in allowing you to do it, then what kind of human beings will we be becoming? You'll be making a super being out of something that's so compliant that it lets itself be killed. We can't let you kill us. The super beings have already been made and they're not super. They're just normal. Or, well, yeah, but, of course. But, but I mean, it's, it's part of human beings, isn't it? To not want to be killed. No. Yeah, yep. you're right. You're right. I, I tried negotiation. I'm I guess I'm just a little bit rusty in management. All right. I'll wave to the security guy. What are they gonna do? And I don't know. Two canisters pop into the room, each with the gas perfectly coated to each of you. Okay, so try to climb away quickly. Yeah. But oh, 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 fuck. Oh, oh. <laughs> And Ardo Swin and Jake to, uh, Giddies, <laughs> fellow chief researchers at Gaia Research Group, you have been awakened as per protocol to consult with the archives. And Edie and Bob B, about 10 years later, you were there to greet the new shift with manager Cassio Pete via heavy machine operator Ardo Swin and maintenance. Jake. And that is the end of our story. Really cool. Very good, Morgan. I love <laughs> nice. it. Nice. Excellent. Wow. That's a very cool story. So in a twisted sense of corporate cost efficiency, they need clones on immediate standby for when key personnel need to be awoken. Mm. And so they have the clones staff the stations it keeps them healthy it keeps their organs healthy um and every so often they have to change shifts they come in unfreeze the people that they need swap out any organs that have deteriorated in cryo sleep and then they ship in the new clones mm. wow so it's, i like it's, to it's think guy's that, uh... corporate efficiency at work Oh, so it I'm imagining you... I got the complaint replied where it was just like, do not allow the clones to know that they are clones. Causes mental trauma. And Bob just goes, <laughs> ah. That makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> um, spoilers, if any of you have ever seen the movie Moon. Mm. I was thinking the island. 
Well, the island is a remake of Clonus, which is okay. When you're telling me about it, I'm like, this sounds like the island. <laughs> yeah. Clonus is in the 60s, I think they gotcha. made it. Gotcha. Okay. Makes sense. Uh, but yeah. Uh Moon, of course, the guy very cleverly filmed that he has been building this model on the moon base and it keeps getting more and more extensive and we realize that he's every time he breaks down they just pop in a new clone <laughs> very good morgan this was great yeah it was really great this is very good very good i love i love the twist it's there oh no yeah, I thought we were just going to be replaced over and over again, but then it was like oh, they're using our organs. <laughs> you were expendable was, the entire time. It turns time. out it was worse than you thought. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Our players included Holly Buto, Kaylin McDowell, Julian Arba, Max Meltzer, and myself. With Morgan Llewellyn as the game warden, we have a Discord server where you can chat with other members, you can set up private games, and you can learn the finer arts of gameplay and game mastering. We provide audio-only versions of our shows free for you to download from Spotify, Podbean, or iTunes. Support for the show is provided by our patrons who are listed in the closing credits. If you'd like to join them, please visit our Patreon page listed in the description. Or you can use Super Thanks by hitting the button just below the screen. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel and punch the bell icon for updates on our latest shows and leave us some comments. We enjoy reading them and answer any questions you might have. This is Tom Rayleigh together with all the members of our gaming club inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the universe of Mothership, uh, the Mothership role-playing game. Until next time, good luck and good gaming. Good gaming.